Right, so I'm, I'm going to explain uh, how we can keep things secret uh, by using some sort of uh, privacy preserving uh, technique. So our problem is that how do we book a, a cinema ticket without the cinema actually knowing that we are the person who's actually booked the seat and also that they don't double book uh, uh, for a seat. Okay, so the method that we use is what's called cumulative in encryption. So normally what happens with, uh, with, with encryption is that uh, we have, uh, if we use a public key method, then we have a public key and a, a private key. Okay, so we encrypt with our public key and we decrypt with our private key. Okay, so what normally happens is that if we have Bob and Alice, then we must, if we encrypt with Bob's public key, and then encrypt that data with uh, Alice's public key. Okay, so we take our, our data here. We encrypt with Bob's public key. We're then going to encrypt again with Alice's public key. The way it works is that we must use the private key here of Alice to decrypt first and then the private key of Bob next. Okay, so we now have to use uh, Alice's private key here and then Bob's private key. Okay, so data encrypt with Bob's public, encrypt with Alice's public, then we must decrypt with the reverse here uh, into the private and then we must decrypt with Bob's private. So we can't swap the order around there. So in this way, each can add their key onto the system, onto the data. But the problem that we have is that we must unpick the data in the reverse order that the keys were applied. So it's a bit like when you have a HASP for a, a uh, isolating a piece of control equipment. You isolate the power, you put the hasp on, that's like a little lock here, and then you add your padlock onto the, onto the system. If you're working on it, maybe you're an electrician, you put your padlock on there and it keeps the power isolated, and then each person who's working on it will put on their padlock. So it wouldn't do any good if we actually had to take the padlocks off in the order, the reverse order that they were put on. So in this type of system, each person can take their padlock off, and then once all the padlocks are off, then we can uh, we can uh, get access. We can put the power back on for for the system. Okay, so this doesn't work out in that way because we must do it in the reverse order. So if we want to do something like routing of data or if we have a voting system and we want everybody to apply their public key and only for the data to be revealed when we take all the all the keys off with the private keys then it wouldn't work here so cumulative encryption allows us to do this though in that what we can have is that we can have Bob and Alice here uh, applying the private key and Alice to apply her private key there so it doesn't really matter the order uh, that it's that it's done in. Okay so that's that's the basic theory behind it. So let's look at how it actually works. Okay so let's call them the the evil cinema. Okay the evil cinema is showing a, a movie that we love, but we don't trust the evil cinema at all uh, to be able to know which seats that we're sitting in because we think they're going to sell our, our details and target marketing <coughs> for us when we sit in the seat. <coughs> so what we want to make sure is that evil cinema doesn't actually know where we're sitting. So initially, the cinema produces a number of tickets for each of the uh, each of the seats. 
So what we want to make sure is now that we don't double book, but the Evil Cinema doesn't know which uh, seat they were sitting in. So what they do is that they will now use uh, random keys. They will do a key generator and they will come up with a whole bunch of these keys one at a time public key and a private key from there such as using RSA and then what they're going to do is encrypt the so this is the public and this is the private key so what they're going to do is encrypt it with the public key here okay so we'll end up with an encrypted A1 an encrypted A2, encrypted A3, encrypted with these keys here. So that's key 3 and key A1. Okay, so that's encrypted with that key, that's encrypted with that one, that one with that one, and so on. And then they'll send the whole bunch of these booking tickets to, to us. And then what we'll do is we'll create our own key pair. So there's our public key and the private key. So that's our public key and then there's our private key. Okay. So then we'll get these and then what we need to do is now to take the booking that we want, such as A2, and we'll now apply our public key onto that encrypted uh, value. Okay, so we'll take that key and now we're going to encrypt that. Okay, so uh, the booking, so we encrypt the booking with, uh, with key uh, A2 and with our key, our public key. Okay, so that's then that's the encrypted value with this key and that key. Okay, so we send all the bookings back. It detects that one has changed, which is this one here. And then what it'll do is it will take the private key from the, the associated booking here, and then it will decrypt that value back again. Okay, so this is now encrypted with our public key. So it decrypts that, sends that back, then we use our private key here to be able to decrypt that and what we should get is our receipt for A2. Whatever was created here, that is now a receipt. And if it's done fairly and honestly, then the uh, the cinema, so this could be a trusted entity here, who will take the, the the bookings and do the the management of the keys. So the cinema doesn't actually know that we've booked A2. That ticket now doesn't exist. Encrypted one here, so it can't resell it but it can't tell that we've actually selected that ticket there and we will get our receipt there. Okay, so let's look at uh, how this works in, in real life. Okay, so if you know about uh, RSA, then you go, you pick P and Q, which are prime numbers. You take N, you work out phi. Okay, so the way RSA works, and RSA does does cumulative partially <laughs> with some things. So uh, if we take RSA, we come up with a P and a Q. We then go for N. N is the multiplication of the two values together. And we calculate phi. Phi is P minus 1 times Q minus uh, one and, and there. We uh, then select our encryption key so that it doesn't actually share any 
factors with with phi. Okay, so if if n was if p was five and q was seven, that's four times six, which is twenty-four. The factors for that are two, uh, two, three, uh, four. But uh, the even numbers are all covered now. Five isn't uh, a factor of phi, so we could select uh, near five. We then do e times d mod of phi equals one. We select the d value, and then that gives us our, our, our encryption keys. So how do we create that as a cumulative method? So the way that we do that is that we share uh, the values of n and p and q with Alice. Okay, so we we need to agree that we share them, and then she calculates uh, the encryption key, and then the phi value, and then they they share that together. So hopefully we'll be able to to generate an example here. Okay, so there's that example. So, so once once uh, those values are shared, then uh, Alice can then go ahead and she can uh, then calculate her values. So you see what Bob, the values that Bob has used there. He has an encryption key of 107, decryption key of 143. And Alice also has an encryption key of 143. And she's calculating a value of 107. Okay, so the core element here is that they have shared the P and the Q and uh, value, and also the value that, that, that E. Uh, n and the n, the p and the q uh, value and then Alice will go ahead and create the keys based on those two. So it's important that the prime numbers which uh, Bob has created is actually shared with, uh, with Alice. So in this example here, so we can see Alice's decryption key is different from Bob's decryption key. Uh, and we've actually selected the same encryption value, uh, but it doesn't have to be the same, and it's likely that it's going to be different. Let's see if I can generate another one. Uh, but this encryption value is based on the n and the phi. So both Bob and Alice are doing their picking based on the two Ps and Qs that, that they have. So Bob is calculating the E and V based on that value and also Alice is doing the same. And if they do that, then it all works out. <laughs> the biggest risk is that they're sharing the P and Q value uh, here. So there must be some way for them to agree uh, on that securely so that they can generate their own E and D value uh, based on the, on the P and Q. And if that works, then we should be able to do our, our cumulative encryption. So in this case here, there we go, there's a message. Bob encrypts it, Alice encrypts it. We get that value, Alice decrypts it, that value, and then Bob decrypts it, and we get the original value back. And here I've done a, a little calculation again. This time it's Bob, Alice, then Bob, and Alice, and we get the same value back. Okay, so that's cumulative encryption, and I hope that makes sense. Okay, thank you.